Could somebody please make it make sense? Hey everybody, welcome to A Pop of Culture. I am your host, the Esoteric and Facetious. Today we'll be discussing Encore, BET Presents the Encore, Season 1, Episode 4. A Pop of Culture is a video essay podcast where I speak on pop culture, social justice, and the human experience from a blah, 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 black, blah, 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 bisexual media perspective. Everything, and I mean everything I say, should be taken with a grain of salt, as in simply a recent college grad with access to recording device in the internet. With that being said, my intention shouldn't be your sole reason to critique my views unless it's truly relevant. If you disagree with anything I say, let's have a civil conversation in the comment section below. Feel free to check out my cover channel. I have a cover channel, Pop Culture Sings, where I sing throwback R&B, contemporary R&B, pop music, whatever I'm feeling, whatever you're feeling. So if you want to be down like Brandy, if you're down with the click, RP Ali, and definitely feel free to check that channel out. With that being said, let's get into the topic of this video which is BT Presents the Encore. So just like last week, I'm going to be covering the main players of the episode and my thoughts on those main events, rather than just going through every single thing, because obviously we saw the episode. Let's just get to our thoughts on things rather than just recapping what you just watched. So Aubrey, this episode was all over the place. So if you haven't watched my videos, I have a playlist of my BT Presents the Encore recap slash review slash commentary so definitely feel free to check those out but if you watch the second one I was very critical of Aubrey because I felt like she was trying to turn the woman against Keely and here's my thing Keely is not beyond reproach but I do feel Keely had good intentions when she was trying to keep the group together even though I agreed with Aubrey that the group should be two groups two separate groups I didn't like how Aubrey initiated division within the group alongside the twins but then literally an episode later decided hey <clears throat> i want to gain the favor of the women again so i'm going to be talking about us being a group us being united us all being equal etc in this pinterest board conversation i didn't like this because here's my thing if you want the groups to be separate let the groups be separate if you want the women to be together on the tracks, let the women be together on the tracks. Because literally, even in this episode, she still wanted her and the twins to be on the skeletons track. So it's confusing because it's like you had this Pinterest board about us all being together, us all being united. And now you're wanting to be with the twins on the skeletons track and you're wanting Shamari to not be added. So here's my thing in this episode. I did not like the fact that Aubrey was not... Im interacting with the twins once Shamari got added to Skeletons because here's my thing I do get okay she wanted to be on the track Skeletons with the sisters but here's my thing if you believe in yourself and you as a vocalist you shouldn't be threatened by the fact that Shamari is being added I feel like if you're a bomb vocalist like you say you are then having another great vocalist on the track is just gonna make it more pop in because that's my thing I feel like if she believes her and the twins have the vocals where they need to. We know Shamari's the strongest singer. So I feel like her not wanting to share the spotlight makes me feel like she's intimidated by Shamari. And I don't like that whole thing of, if I don't get my way, I'm not even going to interact. I'm not even going to, you know, be involved. Now, I'm going to keep it fair, though. The rest of the women, like Lamisha, got to have their little fit where they didn't want to work and they got to be lazy. So I feel like if we're going to let... Lamisha and them have their little fit where they don't get to work then I feel like we have to be fair and we can't just act like Aubrey while well, Aubrey's being lazy this one time because I'm like I feel like Aubrey has kind of been doing a lot the whole time even though Aubrey kind of did you know start with the division I feel like Aubrey's been doing her work so I kind of do feel like it is shady for them to act like oh well we can't even trust her anymore like we can't even like I feel like the way that they did her later on in the episode was dirty but I didn't like Aubrey like I said, trying to act all innocent when she was the one who started Division. Another thing that she does is she kind of talks to Elijah, the producer slash songwriter, about how the twins are trying to dominate the process. And my thing is, I feel like she was trying to sow seeds of doubt within Elijah where the twins are literally just doing their job. Like, they're people who write songs and produce, so they want to do that on the album because they have that talent. And that's my thing with the twins. The twins are open to other people singing the stuff. 
they are open to people taking bird's eye view or skeletons or talking. They're open to people seeing that stuff, but they want it done right. And I feel like Aubrey was just trying to divide things up because obviously she saw that Elijah and the twins had some type of camaraderie. So I feel like Aubrey, she's trying to be divisive where she's trying to get him to doubt them so that maybe he'll be more forceful with how he tries to interact with the project where maybe he'll push for the other girls rather than the twins like where he'll not really want to see it for them because he thinks that they've slighted him so i feel like aubrey knew what she was doing by saying those things she did and i'm glad that elijah and the twins were able to go on instagram live and really talk it out hash it out and see like that they didn't have any beef between each other because i feel like aubrey was intentional with that i also feel like aubrey is trying to manipulate irish i love irish i think she is a really good um addition to the show she's comedic you know she's got a little shade to her and i feel like irish is somebody who's trying even though she doesn't have the strongest vocals she's trying and i loved how she sounded on her solo when it was on talking and i feel like her voice is there she's just got to kind of work through it and she even sung a cover on instagram of he is by brandy from full moon and i feel like her voice i feel like she just has to really learn her voice again and figure out what she can do like figure out like just i feel like she just has to get back in the practice and i think she can do some great things but i feel like she is being manipulated by aubrey and the first time i saw this was when Aubrey stops, you know, feeding all these lies to Elijah about the twins or half-truths. Then Irish comes up and says, hey, twin. And I'm just like, sis, you are hanging out with the enemy. And I'm not trying to make it like, seem like Aubrey's the worst person ever. Because I feel like Aubrey, though she has, I feel like Aubrey still has good intentions, even though I feel like she's been being a little shady lately. And I feel like Aubrey's putting more work than some people like Lamisha, at least as of episode two. And she's been pretty agreeable so far when it's come to contributing to tracks. Except for, of course, Skeletons, which she wanted to be her and the twins. The next time that Aubrey manipulates, in my opinion, Irish is when she makes Irish the temporary queen. Because Aubrey schedules a party, but then she says, I don't feel like I'm going to be going. So Irish, you can be the temporary queen. So I feel like Irish is being manipulated by Aubrey because Aubrey knows. Because here's my thing. It seems like Irish does have some emotional maturity because of the things she's been through. But I feel like, I don't know, like, Irish just seems like somebody who, if you're friendly to her, then she's going to take it at face value. And I appreciate that in people, but I feel like with Aubrey, with her kind of making some different moves and stuff, I just wouldn't trust her because I'm like, you didn't want if you didn't want to be in a group with me on episode one, and now, later on, a few episodes down the line, now we're best friends and you love me so much, I would just want to give, give you the side eye and figure out, okay, what are your intentions with this? Going back to Aubrey, later on in the episode, Pam writes a song, or Pam writes a song in collaboration with one of the twins. The twin on the live said that Pam had basically like two lines down and she kind of, I guess, helped Pam to arrive at the song. She did most of the work. Well, anyways, when Pam writes the song, the gospel song, alongside the twin, Elijah wants for Aubrey to come in at the end to give these powerful belty vocals at the end. We see all of the other women singing their different parts in the song, and it's sounding beautiful. Now, one thing I will say, though, is... Lamisha and I'm and Lamisha actually deactivated her Instagram, so I want to send her love and positivity. But I'm also going to keep it real, and I'm not going to lie. Like when she was singing the part, like for me, that's one of the concerns I brought up last week or maybe the week before that is with Lamisha and Irish, especially now Lamisha. It seemed like it was Irish before, but Irish has been like getting pitch and repeating the parts back pretty good. But with Lamisha. She was repeating the part back that they were trying to get her to sing. And she was like changing key. She was not, her pitch was off. It was not sounding right. And for me, I just really want Lamisha as she work, continues to train and hone in on her, on her craft to just really focus on pitch. Because if you don't have pitch, you don't have anything. Because like you can work on, on breath control, you can work on support. But if you don't have pitch, if you can't sing what you need to sing, there's like, you don't even have the foundation down. And I recommend if she 
is trying to improve just singing along with tracks even if it's just like old 702 tracks singing along with it making sure am i singing the same note that is being sung you know but going but aubrey is asked to sing these big powerhouse belty vocals at the end which is clear she's a fan of christina aguilera so i feel like this was very much in her wheelhouse i get for her not wanting to sing a gospel track because that may not be her brand and as someone who's not a christian i do get the idea of you know everyone singing the song about loving god so much and it may be a little bit awkward but i guess for me since i'm somebody who sings r&b music and has like experience in the church like i don't think i like if it's a song and that's what people are doing if that's a task at hand i'm gonna do it and i feel like aubrey it's weird to me i'm like aubrey you want to sing but you only want to sing when it's like on skeletons or certain tracks and i just feel like you singing i'm nothing without you like I don't know. I just felt like with Aubrey, she was just being purposely difficult. And I get that she was tired, but here's my thing. And this is something I'm going to say, and I really mean this. As a singer, I can, like, as a singer and even as a performer, there are certain opportunities that, like, where I know if Beyonce said to Aubrey, I need an opening act for my tour. I need you to sing this part and I need you to sing it right. And if you sing this right, then you can be on my tour. Aubrey would have got those notes perfect. Aubrey would have been singing notes she's never even sung before because she would have wanted it. But I could tell Aubrey didn't want to do this. And her vocals were sounding crazy. And I feel like some of it was maybe, you know, she was tired. She was trying to get the part right. You know, obviously, you know, studio, you know, we only feel in product. But I just like Aubrey, just the pushback was just annoying to me because I feel like it was like, my thing is, like I said, like I get an aversion to like not wanting to be, you know, doing something gospel if you don't identify with that religion or that type of thing. But I feel like she was, it was just, it didn't feel like an aversion to gospel music, like the song in particular. It felt like an aversion to like maybe like black Christianity or black religious people or that whole type of thing. And I just felt a little way about that. Let me know if y'all felt something similar to that. Speaking of that, Shamari sounded beautiful. Irish, she, you know, had her little part down. Nivea, she was singing kind of low. And I'm not, and I will say I do like, I'm getting more into learning vocals and harmonies and stuff like that. And I feel like sometimes, like those lower parts, I am, and especially like a, a Destiny's Child fan, sometimes they're there and you can hear them. But like, if you just played like, for example, like Latavia's like lower notes by themselves in isolation, they may kind of sound a little weird. But I feel like it'll sound better when it's all put together. But this show loves having Keely or Nivea sing these really low parts and have us looking at them like they're crazy. But I feel like it'll all sound better in the end. So we've talked about Opry. We've talked about Irish. Let's see who else we're going to talk about. The twins actually made peace with Lamisha, which I loved because I feel like that was something that really needed to happen. Even though I think they were right in some of the things that they were saying, I think that they were sometimes going about it the wrong way and just being overly hurtful with the things that they were saying now one thing i'll say with the confessional that annoyed me is they were is i feel like they were still trying it with oh lamisha you know she's just intimidated by us because we're just so much more talented than, than her and for me that just kind of crossed the line where i'm just like i do think some people are like more objectively talented like at things like singing and songwriting than other people but i feel like things like talent are a kind of a gray area thing where like for example i think the twins right now are better singers than Lamisha, but even the twins themselves like i do think there's a there's a part where it comes to talent where technique and being good at something aren't like i don't know how to describe it but a great singer is not necessarily just someone who sounds good but it's someone who can move you emotionally who like like can take it there like for example, like Whitney Houston, like she may not sing the live song ever, the same every time, but every time it's going to be wonderful. And I feel like with the twins, they're talented vocally. They can lay a vocal. Like, I think there's being a good singer and being a wonderful singer, like an excellent singer. And some of that stuff can't be taught. It's stuff that you have to experience and feel and just work your way towards or just you just have it. And I feel like with the twins, I think them saying that they were more talented than Lamisha bothered me because I'm like, yes, objectively, you are better at singing. But I feel like as far as talent, I feel like the twins, maybe it'll be on the track. But I feel like the twins, I've seen them do good things and sound good on the show. But I'm like, are you going to give me that excellent vocalist stuff? Where is that stuff that can't be taught? Or are you just going to give me you sound good? You know what I mean? 
Kiwi is being Kiwi. She actually ends up talking some mess about Aubrey. And it was funny because Aubrey pulled up on her. But my thing is, I will give Kiwi props. Kiwi said the same thing that she ended up saying on her live. I watch her live about this the show after each episode. And pretty much what she was saying before Aubrey jumped up on her was, Aubrey acted friendly towards me before we got on the show. But when I got on the show, she switched up on me. And I don't feel that that warranted what Aubrey was giving her. I do think it's okay for Aubrey to check her for talking mess behind her back. But it's also like, I feel like somebody talking behind your back, we need to, like, you can clock them for talking about you behind your back. But we have to realize, okay, someone saying you left the toilet seat up is different from somebody saying that you cheated on your significant other those are different things and i feel like aubrey just came at her with 100 percent. i still feel like keely should be in the group i'm hoping she does become a part of the group because even though you know quote unquote creative director all that stuff and i think that obviously it seems like she's helping out felicia and fallon you know behind the scenes and you know acting kind of like an assistant a runner as i said earlier i don't think there's an issue with that but i just feel like we wanted keely on the show because we wanted 3LW Cheetah Girls. We wanted to see how our talent has evolved. I actually was watching some live performances from 3LW and the Cheetah Girls. And even if you look from 3LW to Cheetah Girls, it's clear that Keely's vocal ability grew a lot. And Keely has been able to dance. So she's always been the one to like cut up the choreography, do really good with the choreography. But even in Cheetah Girls, like her vocals really improved from 3LW, where if you listen to 3LW, it was mainly Adrian and Notori who were doing good on their debut album. And it was mainly Keely just kind of supplementing here and there and doing the raps. So I want to see how Keely, just like the other performers, has grown. And I get her not wanting to be an artist, but I do feel like uh, if you don't want to be an artist, maybe not sign up for the show. So I'm hoping she becomes a part of the group, but who knows? Even though I'm not the biggest fan of Pam's viewpoints when it comes to her, you know, believing that homosexuality can be unlearned or it's something that you know can be healed from or delivered from i don't agree with that i believe that if you are lgbt identified or like whatever your sexuality is like i believe that that is who you are and of course you can choose not to act on that but i feel like if you're bisexual if you're gay if you're straight that's who you are like a straight person could marry a a gay person and pre play pretend for all they want but that doesn't mean that that's who they want to be even if that's what they're doing and vice versa a gay person could marry a straight person and they can play all day but they know in their heart what they want and it's been shown that things like conversion therapy don't work but to each their own but going back to what i was saying i like pam and the fact that pam was actually willing to sit down and help to make the song even though the twin helped it to really be what it was alongside i guess the other producers and stuff i feel like having that initiative and having that drive of hey this is something i'm kind of here and this is kind of what i'm doing i give her credit for that and i'm glad that the other women other than aubrey were able to hop on the track and really make it something because that's my thing sometimes you have the vision but like especially like as a singer sometimes you can have the vision but i think like with the group it's great to see you may have that vision you maybe have that little thing that you're humming but to see other people kind of help you to get to the finish line i think that's something that's really motivational if you're not familiar with taylor swift on her 1989 the deluxe edition she has these voice memos and on those voice memos there's one of them where she she talks about how there was like a lyric she thought of and how that turned into a song and one of them somebody else had like a beat or something that and then she asked them hey can i have that i, I have a song that i'm thinking of but two of the voice memos one was she had a, a thought of a song from a lyric and another one she just had a thought of a song from like the meat from a beat that she heard from a friend or like a some music that she heard from them and I think it's just so beautiful to see thoughts in your head or little beats or little melodies that you think come into a song and seeing the other singers come on there and hop on the track and it sound beautiful and layering the vocals. I think that's what we should see all the time on the show. One of the things that I thought about in between the episodes was for a lot of people who are trying to be put on, studio time can be very expensive, especially if you're somebody who's, you know, working a nine to five job, someone who's not already got, you know, a substantial form of income. And like... 
even the most inexpensive studios could be like 150 an hour so one of the things that really bothered me about the fact that some of these ladies are not really taking the studio seriously in studio time and they're sleeping and being restful and not actually doing things is i just feel like even like for me as you know someone who's you know doing covers trying to you know learn my way through my craft home my craft you know eventually you know like get to the point where i can make music potentially you know make something out of it it's very frustrating to these women with access to producers access to vocal coaches access to choreographers you have all this at your disposal and you're just wasting time like i can't tell you like if you get some of these spotify rappers these soundcloud rappers and they were in a house for 30 days even if i was in the house for 30 days i'm gonna be up in that studio. i'm gonna be up with that vocal coach trying to get things right and do all this so i just feel like some of these people are really squandering the opportunity that they have and it's really really sad let's see what else happened in the episode the party happened and of course aubrey was no show so irish becomes the queen irish who she's been manipulating this whole time and it was actually a nice little party you know people got their little cute outfits on that some of them had their little drinks i thought it was a nice way for them to bond and i think if aubrey had been there and aubrey had kind of admitted hey sorry guys like i i really just was wanting to be on skeletons like i just was insecure or like i had to something with, with danity kane and i just really wanted to you know shine through just like all of us want to shine through if she'd even made up some bs stuff she didn't even mean it i feel like she could have made things better but of course she is not there she's not doing what she needs to do so of course the people start conspiring against her and here's my thing i'm annoyed at this because i feel like some of these people y'all are being just as lazy if not more lazy than aubrey was aubrey does get on my nerves but at the same time i don't think aubrey did anything worse than what y'all did so i feel like they're kind of ganging up on her and i feel like that's my thing some of y'all are acting like aubrey's the issue and in some ways i feel like aubrey maybe playing into the division but it's also like Nasus Aubrey been putting in work and I kind of felt a way about that I felt I felt felt a lot even though Aubrey gets on my nerves sometimes I feel like there was some dirty behavior going on for example the vocal coach who wanted Shamari to be on there which funnily enough Shamari is like is a student of that vocal coach and she was kind of saying stuff like oh well Aubrey's timing is off in skeletons and it's like even though Aubrey yes Aubrey wasn't available to fix that stuff or whatever because she was being lazy but i'm also like i feel like a lot of the other women have been doing being more lazy than aubrey was so i feel like the vocal coach kind of rubbed me the wrong way like acting like her time was off my thing is no no miss ma'am you're not gonna do that because you're acting like timing timing if she listened to it a few more times she could get the timing right but some of these women can't even get the key right so don't sit here and come up and try to take aubrey's verse and act like you're being so innocent miss thing i i enjoy the vocal coach but i'm like sis i kind of feel like you're being biased towards shamari and i'm calling you out on that going back i'm sorry i'm all over the place but going back to the party the women at the party are kind of conspiring against aubrey they're thinking they're gonna you know i guess do a little coup throw her out do this that and the third and i'm like aubrey was being lazy but i'm like pam was also not doing that much as queen so i kind of feel like they're getting all this with newfound heat for aubrey and they're making aubrey i feel like they're projecting all of the failures of the group onto aubrey even though i feel like that's not even fair i'm not even an aubrey fan but i'm like aubrey does not deserve all of this that you're giving her yes some of it but like not all of it some of it is y'all just doing the most but how do y'all feel what do y'all think about everything going on with this episode i hope that they don't kick aubrey off aubrey hasn't been promoting the show that much so i don't know if she thinks she's too good or i don't know what's going on with that people speculate that she's gonna leave i hope she doesn't leave i hope her and keely become part of the group but if she leaves and keely becomes a part of the group i'll be fine with that too because i like keely's voice and i enjoy keely in general but what do y'all think what are y'all's thoughts let me know comment down below love y'all bye bye share your thoughts below like this video if you like this video if you made it to this point in the video comment a thumbs up emoji below or a still here if you are still here subscribe if you want to see more and make sure to hit that bell so you're the first to know when i upload new content i upload new content every week and if you're enjoying yourself and why wouldn't you be enjoying yourself to the left there's a playlist of all my video essay and podcasts i have 24 in counting and the center's a button to subscribe if you just haven't had a chance to subscribe and you would like to and to the right is a playlist of all of my covers and parodies so if you are wanting to check those out feel free to do so 
And if you want to support me, if you want to support the show, first and foremost, a non-financial way you can support is just through sharing this video. I can make the thumbnails, I can, you know, make the titles, I can do the tags and do keyword research. One of the best ways that I can grow my brand is through y'all sharing this content with other people who like this type of content because... I nor you can control the algorithm, but I can control the quality of the content I make and y'all can, if you enjoy the content, share with people who can like it. So that way, you know, if y'all are feeling it, it's getting put out there, whether, you know, the algorithm favors it or not, somebody's going to see it because you resonated with it and you resonated with me and now you're sharing it with other people. So if that's a non-financial way, you can support the channel. And if you do want to support this channel financially, my cash app is linked in the description of this video. You know, I'm trying to, you know, upgrade my production quality and just, you know, keep growing and growing and expanding and, you know, doing bigger and better. So if you want to help and support that vision, feel free to do so. All those who donate to the channel will be featured in the credits of all of my videos on both of my channels. Thanks so much for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye. See you next time.